Hello, my name is Dr. Carrie Palomera. I am a primary care physician and director of the Center for Physician Wellbeing at Massachusetts General Hospital, where I also direct our physician coaching programs. In addition to those roles, I work closely with the American College of Physicians, helping to lead their physician coach training programs. Through all of this work, I have learned a great deal about well-being and what it means for us as physicians and us as humans along our, our journeys. And what I'd love to do is share some of those learnings with you today. Now, as I introduce myself, I hear myself saying this title that sounds like it's all figured out, it's all packaged, as if there was a straight line from when I was in your position to where I am now. But I want to make sure that the one largest takeaway from today that may help you set all of your expectations for life moving forward is that it is never a straight line. And while we may look at each other and see successes and see the journey in the cleanest version, in, in the version that we all like to show behind the scenes, there are a lot of zigzags. There are a lot of twists and turns, ups and downs. And it's actually those zigzags and ups and downs that define us, that make us who we are, that give us the grace and the beauty that we have if we choose to find it. But that there is a choice and that there is some work. And so hopefully what I can do today is to provide you some guidelines and some ways to approach that work so that it actually can be fun and that we decrease the amount of suffering and stress that we have along the way as we find our way. So there are four lessons that I wanna share with you today. The first is thinking about what makes you tick. The second is about controlling the controllables. The third is being kind to ourselves. And the fourth is embracing uncertainty. So let's start off with the first, what makes you tick? That may sound like an overwhelming question to answer, but in fact, you've probably already had enough experience to figure that out. Because what I love to do about my job today has everything to do with what I love to do as a child, as a teenager, as a college student, who I've always been. But as we go along these journeys and we start that professional identity formation where we go from a person and develop into a physician, we lose sight a little bit of who that person was the, from the get-go. Let me tell you what I mean. When I was little, I loved reading. I loved chapter books. I would sit there and get so lost in a series, so connected to characters that I, would, I could read all day long. I also loved playing sports and that was basically all I did. I either played sports or was reading. And I never played any sports that were just me. I always played in, on team sports. I didn't love being alone. In fact, I had a very big family and I was always surrounded by people and that was the way I loved it. And so family, teams, stories, connecting with people was everything about who I was then. And now look at what I do. I'm a primary care physician. My whole day is spent being a part of people's lives and learning their stories. The work that I do in well-being, I rarely ever do by myself. I'm surrounded by others and teams and, and I'm rarely working alone, which is a really nice feeling. But for a long time, I didn't get that connection. I didn't get that who I am today has everything to do with who I was before. And the more I made that connection, the more confident I felt in my own skin. The more I felt like who I was was an amazing thing and that I brought something really unique to the table. I started doubting myself less. I started wondering what my val value was far less often than I did before because I, I understood it because it's who I always was. So what I urge you to do is think about now, what makes you tick? What has always made you tick? What do you love to do? What could you do that just could completely lose track of time? What do you do that always recharges your batteries, that gives you energy rather than drains you? Whatever the answer to those questions may be, what I want you to do is hold on to as much of that as you can in the coming years. Whatever little time you have, invest in spending that time doing these activities, even if it's just for a few minutes, because you know that this is who you are and you know that that will make you the best version of you if you stay connected to those themes. 
And as you move along your journey, make sure that whatever steps you take allow you to stay true to that person, that you don't have to fit it in around what you're doing, but there's really room to embrace it as part of who you truly are and what you do for a living. So now that you've considered what makes you tick, now I want you to think about the next piece of advice, control the controllables. This was actually a piece of advice that my college softball coach gave me. And she would say to us all the time that there's very few things you can control when you're out on the field. You can't control the weather. You can't control perhaps how the other team will do, but you can control how you act. You can control who you bring to that field that day and you can control your response in times of stress. And that advice stays true today. When my back is up against the wall, when I'm worried about something that's going on, when I don't know which way to act, I think to myself, what do I have control over? What can I do? And actually, this brings up a great piece of advice, a quote, in fact, from Teddy Roosevelt, which is, do what you can with what you have where you are. And at times when I have felt lost and didn't know how to act, I stopped and said to myself, what can I do? What do I have? How can I act? What can I control here? I can't always control what my patients are doing with their bodies or with their health. I can't always control how many patients I have to see on a given day or how long the messages will be waiting for me when I open up my in basket. But what I can control is the energy that I give to that. What I can control is what I'm able to give to other people as well. And then making sure that I can control what I give to myself so that no matter what, I feel that there's some sense of control over how I use my time and how I use my energy, even if the circumstances around me feel that, make me feel that I don't have any control. And also that quote, do what you can with what you have where you are reminds us that sometimes we can only be where we are. We may wish we were someplace else. We may wish things were different, but we don't always have control over that. But if we recognize that wherever we are is what we have and we can only do the best that we can, it brings me to the third piece of advice, which is being kind to ourselves. Recognizing that what we do each day is really hard. Giving of ourselves to other people asks a lot of who we are and the other people in our lives. And so being kind to ourselves means a lot of different things. It means making sure that we fill our tanks so that we don't get too drained. It means taking care of ourselves so that we can best take care of others. It means not being too hard on ourselves when perhaps we don't feel like we're the best version of ourselves or that we haven't done the best that we can with what we have, where we are. And reminding ourselves that we always have a chance to correct that course, to take a better step in the right direction. It also means not being too hard on ourselves in terms of an email we send or a paper we submit or a project we work on and know that our best on any given day is probably really darn good. And so beating ourselves up doesn't help us really at all. But sometimes that's easier said than done. Sometimes we find ourselves in positions where we're really hard on ourselves or the expectations we have of ourselves are not what we have of other people. And I think when those times come, being honest with ourselves and thinking about what can we do to support ourselves right now can be a good place to start. It also reminds me of another great piece of advice, another quote which ties a little bit to the Teddy Roosevelt quote from a fabulous character, Anna from Frozen 2, when she sings the song, The Next Right Thing. And in it, she says, just do the next right thing. Take a step, step again. It's all that I can do. And when I feel like I'm being really hard on myself, when I feel like I don't know exactly which way to act to be the best version of myself, I start off with what's the next right thing I can do? What's the next best step I can take? I don't look too far ahead. I just look right in front of me. And acknowledging what do I need in this moment right now? How can I give that to myself? How can I ask for that? 
what these principles have taught me is that to be the best version of myself, it means that I need to sleep, I need to exercise, and I need to eat well. And when I get stressed out, I get up earlier so I don't exercise because I convince myself of all the work that's waiting for me that needs to be done. I go to bed later, again, because there's so much that needs to be done and I must do it. And so I sleep less. And then I often find myself foraging for snacks throughout the day rather than eating meals and then eating a, a dinner that might not be as healthy at night. Does this sound familiar? And when I stop and realize that these three principles, eating well, sleeping, and exercising make me the best version of myself, which makes me the best wife, mother, doctor, sister, friend, child, all the things that I am in my world and in my days. When I acknowledge that when I give that to myself, I'm that best version of me and I do a far better job and I'm actually more efficient when I take this time for myself, it really challenges all the beliefs that I had gained along the way, that the harder you work, the easier it will get. Or if you get, if you just get this done, there'll be less to do afterwards. But guess what? The more we do, the more we do, the more that there is waiting for us. So unless we take those breaks ourselves, no one's gonna give them to us. I've learned that along the way. And as I do, I realize no one's yelling at me to get more done. No one's sitting there wondering why I haven't responded because I was the only one noticing those things. So be kind to yourself. In whatever you need, give it to yourself. And stay true to that no matter how busy you get, even if it's just small amounts of time to do those things. So my last piece of advice is about embracing the uncertainty of what the future holds. You'll hear in many career retreats and mentoring conversations, and you'll, you'll hear speakers and, and other people talk to you about how serendipity was, was what allowed them to have the career of their dreams. But that's really frustrating because what the heck are you supposed to do with that? If it's all serendipity, what control do you have? How could you control those controllables if it's just luck? Well, it's not just luck. We make our own luck. We make our own luck by really working towards who we are, who we want to be, and how we want to get there. And you may not always know that. And that feels really uncomfortable. So the way to embrace uncertainty is to try everything at this stage. You have no idea what it is that you'll love, what it is you'll be great at, or, vice, or, or, or even better, both of those things, what you love and are great at. The other thing is partner up. Don't go at it alone. Do things with other people so you can learn together and build relationships and connections along the way. Put yourself out there. Try Sign up for things. And, and don't be afraid of failing. Fail hard. Because every failure I have had, I have learned so much from. The papers that were never published have made the papers that have been published today even better. What I learned through that process, the grants I never got, they make every next grant I do get even more powerful because of the lessons learned along the way. I've also learned to ask for help and not to go at it alone. Many of us, when we're busy, we bury ourselves. And we, we just assume we just have to keep trying. If we keep trying harder and harder, we'll finally figure it out. But it's a lot less work and it feels a lot better if you reach out to other people so that you don't have to struggle. So many times, my first question when someone reaches out to me is, what took you so long? I wish you would have reached out sooner. And so partner up, ask for help, try new things, put yourself out there. And along the way, listen to your gut. Let it guide you. And if you're not sure if you can trust your gut, then just try to examine your experiences and reflect on them and how you feel. Things that make you feel good, keep doing. And along the way, your gut will come and develop itself and you will be able to trust it. And at the very least, as you think about the future, don't think about what should you be doing but think about what could you be doing to embrace a future that would feel good, that would allow you to be that best version of you, and that would allow you to do what makes you tick and be connected with that along the way. So that's the advice I have for you. I hope that this is helpful. At times, things like this, when you hear them, it may feel a little generic or it may feel like, okay, that might be useful. 
but just let this percolate a little bit and then start to really examine your experiences. Start to think about how this advice might be useful to you. What could you take away from this? How could you use this to move forward into that uncertain future in a way that you embrace it, you control what you can, you're kind to yourself, and you think about how can you be the best version of you by doing what makes you tick, by doing what you love along the way. Thank you.